Hello everyone, I am Reverend Gatlin Arthur Chance. My husband, Minister John Chance, and I are the pastors of the Holistic Transformation Ministries at Louisdor Land Settlement in Tobago. The Holistic Transformation Ministries is a Pentecostal church which operates under the umbrella of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. I have been involved in education as a mainstream teacher and special education teacher for 35 years of my life. This program, Bridging the Gap, will be aired on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Saturday at 8 p.m. The program is expected to keep you at the edge of your seat. Join us as we apply the Word of God to deal with issues relating to early childhood and adolescence. Bridging the Gap right here on TIN. Hallelujah. I love worship. So I am just going, we had a lot of worship, but too much worship is never enough. Amen. This is also not so good. Hallelujah. I'm not much of a good singer, but you can help me. You are worthy of it all. That's the, that's, those are the words. You are worthy of it all. Let's stand and give God some praise. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Tell him that this morning. Hallelujah. You are worthy of it. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy of it. Oh, Hallelujah, for from you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory. You are worthy, Lord, you are worthy of it all. Jesus, we give you all the glory, worthy of it all. You are worthy. You are 
are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Jesus, for from you are all yeah, Lord, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. him I love him hallelujah indeed he's worthy you know the other day I was passing along that area in Black Rock it was last Saturday and I saw a number of cars from Turtle Beach right up the hill where Laba got into his accident I don't know if you know what I'm talking about quite up that hill hallelujah and I was wondering, what's happening? Hallelujah. And I found out that it was a, a fet. Plymouth Juve and I started to cry. And I said, oh God, what is wrong with the church? You know, when I looked around here this morning, I said, God, I came from Sherman Road. People came from Canaan. And when I looked and I saw, I said, God help us. I know that there are some persons who are not able to make it. But brethren, we are at the closing of time. And we need to understand that rain or storm. We need to come serve God. We need to fellowship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend who I have in New York, she always tells me, you all have something else in this country. Hallelujah. When ice is on above and ice is below, I have to go to work. Hallelujah. That's for another season. You may have your seat. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk to us. And it's good that we are in our own zone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor McCall not here to tell us. Shh, time, time. Hallelujah. We give God all the praise. And we give him all the glory. Hallelujah. Brethren, you have a good bishop. I've sat with him. I decided that I was not going back. Hallelujah. But I'm back. Hallelujah. And I just give God the glory. Hallelujah. I'm back, Pastor Terry. Hallelujah. As the secretary. Hallelujah. God gave him a word. And I'm sure that it was God that gave him the word for the team building together for a better today and a brighter tomorrow. Hallelujah. God gave that man. And he came from here not so. Roxborough need to give a bigger clap than that. Hallelujah. He's a son of this soil. Hallelujah. Building together for a better today and a brighter tomorrow. Amen. You know, I looked at it and I like to dig deep into things. And God gave me a word, and this word is for a season. Some may have heard it already, Sister Amanda. Hallelujah. It's a word for the season. After the season, I go off on holidays. Hallelujah. You know, I was trying to analyze the team, and I sought to provide some definitions, you know. And I, I looked at the word build, and I said, to build is to construct, not so. To build is to erect or to uh, assemble. And then I thought, how could I fit it nearer or closer into the team? And I said, uh, it could be defined as strengthening and improving, increasing, multiplying. Hallelujah. It could also be regarded as enhancing. As when God had placed Adam... In the garden of Eden and he said, dress it. It was to enhance. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I leave, I need to pray for Carol. God showed me Carol. 
Hallelujah. We need to pray for her. I don't know what's happening, but I just know that I need to pray for her today. Amen? Hallelujah. And then it says to build together. Together speaks of what? Unity. Cooperation. Working collectively. Working in an organized manner. Working in tandem with each other. You know, the team implies a cause and effect outcome. Not so? If we build together, we will have a better today, which speaks of now, presently, and a brighter tomorrow, which refers to the future. So the team encapsulates everything as it relates to our lives as believers in this season and in the season to come. In analyzing the team that God gave the man chosen to lead the Poway Tobago district in this season, building together for a better today and a brighter tomorrow, a very pertinent question arises. And I'm sure some of us would have thought about that question today. What are we building? The team is all well and good to have a team. But what are we building? And as I studied it, it would seem that the answer to this question is revealed in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 1 to 3. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 1 to 3. We are familiar with it. When John the Baptist walked around preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and what did he say? Uh, he said what? He was preaching in the wilderness, and he was saying what? Repent ye! For what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, so Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Hallelujah. Brethren, you see what John told them in those days? It redounds to us today. When John told them that the kingdom of God is at hand, he meant that the kingdom of God was close. It's coming. It's eminent. But who was he referring to that was coming? It was who? Jesus. Hallelujah. It therefore means that Jesus was coming. He represented, he was the kingdom of God that was coming. Because although he came to earth through a woman, we understand that he was also deity. Not so? He was God and man. Because his father was the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this has great implication for us, for the church, for the called out ones. Hallelujah. One of the things that we need to understand is that kingship was in Jesus' birthright. Jesus was born a king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, in some part of scripture it says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Anybody knows where that is? Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, saying what? Eh? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? That's enough evidence to prove that he was born a king. Jesus was born a king. Hallelujah. That is who John was introducing to the earth. The kingdom was coming from heaven to earth. Hallelujah. And, late, and before that, Isaiah prophesied, a child will be born, a son will be given, and the government would be on his shoulder. This area here, that area where they, you carry the burden, it's referred to as the burden area. Hallelujah. We will have a burden bearer. Hallelujah. That's what he was saying. The wonderful counselor, mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus had the weight of the world on his shoulder. Hallelujah. For this we are thankful. The government was on his shoulder. The kingdom 
kingdom was coming and the government was on his shoulder. We can bring the two together and make a very good, hallelujah, a, a, a synonymous interpretation of it. And we will declare that, okay, a kingdom is a form of government. But the form of government that a kingdom is, is a monarchical type of government. Hallelujah. I thank God today that in the world we don't have that type of system, but we thank God that we have king of kings. Hallelujah. We are in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, because we've been called to be part of it. And it is our role to make sure that we build it. Hallelujah. That we live lives, exemplary lives, that we fulfill the purpose for which the king have, would have us to be part of the kingdom so that others will be part of the kingdom of God rather than the kingdom of darkness brethren hallelujah one of the things we need to understand and I said it before a kingdom is not a republic it ain't no president in the kingdom of God hallelujah a kingdom is not a democracy there is no government, I want to make sure I say it for Miss Lawyer that is there. There is no government of the people, for the people, nor by the people. There is no one person that is representing the views, hallelujah, of the people. A kingdom is different. The king has exclusive authority in his kingdom, hallelujah. There is no first past the poor system where 10 people go up and they be elected for and the one with the most votes win. No, Jesus is the king of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The executive is not the kingdom. Your church pastors, we are not the kingdom. Hallelujah. We are not the king of the kingdom rather. There is one king of the kingdom and that's who hallelujah jesus christ in fact i'm not as good as you are with the greek but i i looked at the meaning i said what's the meaning of kingdom and i saw a word hallelujah basileia i hope i got it right basileia and it means rule of God. Hallelujah. In the context that the kingdom is used in the Bible, that's what it means. That's what it means. Rule of God. Hallelujah. You know that we are the called out ones, right? Right? Therefore, we are expected to contribute to the kingdom of God. But we are facilitating the building. We can't build it. Hallelujah. We are facilitating the building of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We are not repository of knowledge. We are facilitators of it. And we need to understand that. Hallelujah. In fact, when we're talking about kingdom, those that are in the kingdom are referred to as subjects. They are subject to the king. We are subject to the king. Forget the hierarchy of our institution. All of us are subject to the king. Hallelujah. We are subject to the monarch. Who is that? The king of kings and the lord of lords. Hallelujah. And we are governed by the laws of the king. The king is therefore in total control of his kingdom. Hallelujah. The kingdom has a constitution. I, wrote, I, I have my scripture says, so anybody has a Bible, hold it up for me. Hold it up for me, brother. That's the constitution of the kingdom. That's the constitution. And because we are subject, so I could bring it a little uh, closer to us, because we are slaves in the kingdom, we own nothing, no possessions, hallelujah. We just have to abide by that constitution. Ask Daniel. Daniel was preferred by King Darius. But when King Darius said, hey, you bow down and worship me. You do X, you do Y. You feel Daniel could have said, well, I'm the president. No, you're nothing as it relates to uh, whatever the king says. 
the king says, you do. Hallelujah. Or you will be banished from the kingdom or you will be executed. Hallelujah. Brethren, we don't want to be banished. Because if we are banished from the kingdom of God, there is another kingdom referred to as the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. And that will lead us to a place where we will end up in hell and the lake of fire. And we don't want to go there. The king is therefore in total control of his kingdom. And in referring to the theme again, building together for a better today and a brighter tomorrow, another very pertinent question. I want to rub it in. Hallelujah. Very pertinent question arises again. Whose kingdom are we building? Power people, brethren, whose kingdom are we building? It has nothing to do with your geographical location. It has nothing to do with your ideas and your beliefs. Hallelujah. Whose kingdom are we building? We are building the kingdom of God. And when God gave uh, Bishop Knowles McCall that theme, he meant entirely that we are building together the kingdom of God. Some persons got it all wrong. Hallelujah. We ought not to try to build our own little kingdoms. Hallelujah. Pastor Prisga was privileged to be the leader of this church and his beautiful first lady of this church. That does not mean that they are kings in this place. Hallelujah. They are still subject to the king of kings and the lord of lords hallelujah there is one king in any kingdom and there is one constitution in any kingdom and there are one set of principles in any kingdom and there is one culture in any kingdom anything else is of another kingdom hallelujah and people of God in this institution we've got to be extremely careful hallelujah hallelujah you see John I spoke about John a while ago in proclaiming the coming of the kingdom of God to earth that would have been manifested through the presence of Jesus Christ. What did he say? What did he say to them? Eh? Do you remember what he said to them? We have to remember that today. Because there are times when, hallelujah, when we do some introspection or some retrospection that we need to repent. Hallelujah. What did John say to them? He said, repent. I could almost hear John, hallelujah, see John roaming the land and shouting, repent, repent, repent. And I'm saying that to us today, we need to repent, some of us, because we believe that we are building our own little kingdom in our own little spaces. That's wrong. It's sin. It's rebellion against the word, hallelujah, of the Lord. And rebellion is sin. Hallelujah. John was indicating that there must be a change of mindset, a change of attitude, a change of perception. Hallelujah. He was indicating that the self-righteousness that was practiced by the religious S-E-C-T-S sects of the day. Hallelujah. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, the religious people, the religious organization. Hallelujah. That wouldn't conform to the principles of the kingdom of God. Self-righteousness is a sin because we are in a kingdom. We are part of a kingdom and we are to build, hallelujah, or facilitate the building. So we should live exemplary lives as subject to the kingdom that would encourage others to be part of the kingdom. Hallelujah. We must constantly uh, be reminded that together, together, united force hallelujah that together we are facilitating the building of the kingdom but only as slaves of the kingdom we need to understand that hallelujah we are under the complete control of the king 
of the kingdom, exclusive rights, hallelujah, and dominion are in the hands of the King Jesus Christ. Who is the project manager and master builder of the kingdom? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The subjects are just required. And John again said, all we are required to do is to abide in the vine. Why do we feel sometimes that we are so much? That we are so important? That when we have a little intellectual strength and some brain energy and whatnot, hallelujah, and a little position, hallelujah, that we mean so much. And we should try to take the control of the kingdom from the hands of the king. That would cause banishment from the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Ask Daniel. That's why he was thrown into the lion's den. Hallelujah. You feel Daniel could have ruled Darius' kingdom? And that's a man. How much more can't we rule the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. We've got to be careful, brethren. No king allows his subjects to alter the constitution and determine the principle by which the kingdom is controlled. No king. Hallelujah. You know, the last person who tried that was Lucifer. Hallelujah. You remember that? His fate was that he was thrown out of heaven, not just him, but with his supporters. Hallelujah. He wasn't thrown out alone, but those that supported him were thrown out also. That's an example to the church today. We've got to be extremely careful. And when he was thrown out, Ezekiel 28 and verse 17, search it when you have time, says that Lucifer's wisdom became what? Corrupt. It became distorted. Hallelujah. Saints and brethren, family and friends, the word of God is the constitution of the king. We abide by it or be banished from the kingdom. And as I said a number of times before, that will leave us in the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. When we rebel against the king, hallelujah, we continue to walk as if we are in the kingdom of God. But it's darkness, so there is no sight. Hallelujah. You see nothing. Your way, hallelujah, it's opaque. You see nothing. Hallelujah. And you feel like Samson that you still have strength. Samson didn't realize that his strength left him after his hair, hair was cut. Hallelujah. We ought not to fall into that position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not being, uh, God has to help us, you know, that we are not being deceived into believing that we are operating in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. When in fact we are operating in the kingdom of darkness, we have to be careful. Remember the Lord said that the wheat and the tears will grow together. So we will grow together and it will appear as if we are in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. When we in fact we are operating by the laws and the principles and the culture of the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. We are just mere subjects in the kingdom of God. And that's why I don't know. My church will notice I like to go down before God and let God know, Father, I am just a mere Bob Hope daughter. Hallelujah. You are God. Without your breath, I can do nothing. There is nothing that I own or nothing that I am that could be compared to who you are. Ah, hallelujah. We need to humble ourselves before the king. Hallelujah. Because this king that I'm talking about loves us so much. Hallelujah. That he decided to give his life for us. He's different from the earthly kings. This is a king that loves us unconditionally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, I want to remind us again, and I'm glad that this, going all, this is going all through, hallelujah, because I want everybody to hear it. We need to do some introspection. If we find that when we do the introspection, that we are rebelling against what the king of the kingdom has ordained, that we are rebelling against what the king of the kingdom have set up, 
we are in trouble. Hallelujah. The way we are living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the principles that we are living by in that case would be the kingdom of darkness and not the kingdom of heaven. We need to repent quite often, you know. Sometimes when you see me on my knees, hallelujah, Louis, we don't, don't know. Sometimes when I go down there, I'm begging God for forgiveness because I don't know what I would have thought or said every night before I go to bed. Last night I heard some thunder. Hallelujah. I didn't know it was thunder. And I said, sweetheart, what is that? That consistent noise I never heard. I don't know if it was thunder or um, what they call it, that they burst. Yeah, I don't know what it was. But he heard me. I started to say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for anything that I... And he asked me, what happens with that? Why? I said, forward. I'm being cautious. In case it's Jesus that is coming, he mustn't meet me with anything. Hallelujah. So I started to repent and he started to laugh at me. I said, you better repent because you don't know what's coming. Hallelujah. We need to repent as a people of God. Father, forgive us. Oh God, forgive us. If we have failed you in any manner, forgive us. Forgive us for having had our little meetings and hallelujah, gossiping concerning the leaders that you have placed in power. Forgive us, hallelujah, for gossiping concerning the failures of the people in the church. Forgive us. It's sin, brethren. It's sin. He said, love your neighbors, you love yourself. You want anybody to gossip concerning you? If you, are, if you have failed, hallelujah, this lady sing, sang that song, what's her name? How many wounded soldiers, hallelujah. Man, when a soldier is wounded and soldiers operate like that, unless a soldier is dead, they leave in that person there. Hallelujah. But when a soldier is wounded, they have their weapon in one hand. Hallelujah. And the wounded person in another hand. And they're making sure that they get that person to safety. That's how the church should operate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to repent as a people. Hallelujah. You see, it is in Matthew chapter 6 that the Lord uh, told his disciples. You all remember that? How to pray. He said, oh, Father, which, is, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And what did he say again? Thy kingdom come. What kingdom you think they were talking about? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. And because your kingdom have come to earth, it means that the kingdom of heaven is extended throughout the earth. And we are privileged to be part of the extension of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. He said, thy kingdom come what? Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. You know some people still waited, waiting until they go to the new Jerusalem to do what is done in heaven. And to receive the benefits. When the Bible says that thy will be done on earth. As brethren we are a privileged people. That's why when I feel anything in my foot. I'm not saying that I can't die. But if I feel anything. I walk in the name of Jesus. Your work and finish. Walk in the name of Jesus. I do it going up the steps sometimes at my age. Your back, I lay my hands. I say, in the name of Jesus, back. God gave us some things to enjoy. Especially when you're married and you need your back. So you've got to pray. God, strengthen my back. In the name of Jesus. No devil must steal it from us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the benefits we build in together for a better what? Today. You feel it's for next week and next year. And when Jesus comes. Hallelujah. We are a privileged people. And the kingdom has been extended to us here now on earth. Hallelujah. He said in the same uh, Chapter 6 of Matthew, I think it's somewhere in verse 33. Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God. Young people, I used to be young and nice. Ask Terry. Hallelujah. I wasn't always so, you know. Hallelujah. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? All other things. 
brethren, when I tell all you all other things, it's all other things. It will only be done according to the will and the purpose of God. Just make sure that you live righteously. Hallelujah. Kingdom principles should be a natural way of life for the believer. Obedience is a great one. You see, obedience to that constitution, it's essential. Hallelujah. To the benefits in the now or in the present. Don't worry if you live the life, you will get it in the future. Hallelujah. But we are concerned about getting it in the now. Oh God, brethren, no matter how much friends you have and what they're doing, don't seek to do anything outside of the constitution. Once you are part of the kingdom of God, you are subject to hallelujah to what is written in that word please don't do anything and if you even do it god is a merciful god get down on your knees and ask god to forgive you and get back in line again when you fall don't stay down get up hallelujah hallelujah you see obedience is an essential part of kingdom culture I heard Reverend Delvin talking about some this morning. You see, loving the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. You remember when they asked him with the good Samaritan, what must I do to have eternal life? What did he say? Love the Lord thy God with all your what? All your and all your soul. But he didn't stop there. He said, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Don't get carried away. Don't worry with that. You're not an actor. I'm an actor and I was over to, able to overcome it. The loudest mouth probably. A sister, oh, hallelujah, in those areas may be the actors. But I committed my tongue to God and I said, God, you got to change the DNA. Hallelujah, because I want to fulfill your purpose. It doesn't matter what they do to you, what they say to you, how things look. Don't follow them. <laughs> Don't follow them. That if they mash your foot, you have to mash their, 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 their other foot. It's no longer an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Hallelujah. It's grace. And that's why it's not good to have enemies in this season. I'm not saying to be a fool, but try your best. And refrain from having enemies. Change your mindset. Have co uh, there is a, a, a term that they use in psychology. Cognitive reconstruction. Construct the way you think. Bearing in mind all the time that I'm a kingdom subject. And I'm expected to behave in a particular manner. Hallelujah. You see, the way you behave will determine whether others will want to be part of the kingdom or not. And if our team is building together, we're building the kingdom. Hallelujah. In fact, let me use the right term. We are facilitating the building. In other words, we want it to multiply. We want more seeds. How are we going to get that? If we don't love the Lord or God with all our heart, mind, soul. And if we love the Lord or God like that, we'll do everything that it says in his word. We will not be perfect. But when we fail, hallelujah, we will know how to get up and say, Father, I failed. If you don't know the word, it's very important as children of God that you study the word of God. He helps us. Eh, Pastor Delvin, we will know that we were together. Hallelujah. He helps us. Hallelujah. Even if persons can't read, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit teaches illiterate people how to read. I've seen it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to have uh, love one another as we love ourselves. You feel that easy to do? You love yourself, you don't want nothing to happen to you. There are some things that people will do to you. And um, in our own minds and rationalizing, we shouldn't do certain things. Boys, what God says, not about you, you're just a slave. You remember slavery? Did you do history? I taught history for seven years. Brethren, I had to repent when I started to preach. I hated certain people. I don't mean here. 
Hallelujah. They did all kind of things to the black man. And I taught it and I was angry. In fact, one of the arguments for slavery was that the black man was made to serve the white. That thing used to get me angry. And then I said, God. And then there was a time when my husband is from Palatave, And they used to, uh, they had guest house and thing. And they would have a lot of guests from abroad. And sometimes when I go there, you know how the guests have their way that they speak. And sometimes I will hear them saying, hi, how was your day? And what, what did you do today? I used to vex. I said, so why? Well, they had to try to talk like them. Who says that their accent is what we should have? But they understood the, the business that they wanted them to understand them. And they were really looking at the money. Not so sweet, that? Eh? Hallelujah. But I like how the Jamaicans do it. Anywhere in the world they go, they maintain the accent. Hallelujah. They never try to be, to talk like. But then why should I be going there? I love everybody now. Hallelujah. Father, forgive me. I love everybody, but I love my accent as well. And I love the Louisville uh, country um, dialect. I could talk it better than many of you. Hallelujah. I'm very flexible when I'm with my brother Maligan. I could Maligan and I having a conversation in dialect. Hallelujah. You have to know how to switch. You've got to love everybody. And you have to love them in a way that nobody has to curse you to do that. Hallelujah. You think the Christian living, hallelujah, is an easy one. But our eyes are on the prize. And when our eyes are on the prize, we want nothing else but to gain the prize. Hallelujah. You see, if believers have to be forced to do these things, then we could be termed as being religious. That's what the Sadducees and the Pharisees and they, they did. Hallelujah. If we don't do that, then we are not manifesting the culture of heaven. Amen. We would not be operating as a member of the kingdom of God. Brethren, we have to facilitate building of the kingdom of God by adhering purposefully. To that Bible, the Constitution. We will not experience the power of the Holy Ghost in our assemblies. And sometimes I wonder. We will never experience the power of the Holy Ghost in our assemblies. If we are rebelling against what God has established for us in the kingdom at this time. Hallelujah. Do you remember the church in Acts? They were in one accord when the Holy Spirit came. Not so upon them. Hallelujah. So unity is one of the principles. Unity is one of the principles of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We must unite, brethren. We must unite. I want to shout it. We must unite. It doesn't matter the difference of our skins. and uh, Well, that's not our um, thing. Where we're located, how big our church is, all kind of thing, all those petty things. We've got to unite. Brethren, we are building. It means expanding. Hallelujah. Multiplying. Hallelujah. Enhancing. So we've got to use, uh, put the right principles into effect in order to facilitate the building that the kingdom and the king of the kingdom requires. We can't get it any other how. And if we don't do what we are supposed to do, the power of the Holy Ghost will not be manifested in our churches. We wonder sometimes why X, Y, Z doesn't happen. Hallelujah. Perhaps it's because there's something that we're not doing in the kingdom. We've got to unite. We've got to exemplify love and forgiveness. Hallelujah. We've got to live by the word of God, the constitution. It doesn't matter what mistake your brother or your sister made. You've got to live by the constitution. We must unite. Hallelujah. When the church, hallelujah, that was spoken about in Acts united, the church expanded daily. You're wondering why we not people not coming? Hallelujah. Because the unity is not present. 
because the one accordness is not present, that may very well be some of the reasons. Hallelujah. Because if we're not uniting, if there is uh, uh, divisiveness, then, that, then that's not a kingdom culture. Yeah? And we've got to live according to the culture of the kingdom in order to experience the benefits as it is done in heaven. So it is on earth. You feel those things would happen in the new Jerusalem? Hallelujah, not at all. We had to forget about with DNA and forget about the other biases and prejudices that we have and live as children of God who are subjects in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The constitution or the word of God is what, what, what runs the kingdom, not my intellect. Or my decision and what I believe we should do. It's a constitution. Whatever plans we have must come out of the constitution. Hallelujah. The king will not change his constitution to suit our needs. It's the word of God. It's absolute truth. We have to abide with it. It's quick and powerful. Hallelujah. It's quick and what? Powerful. It's alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, it fulfills purpose. That's what will cause the power of the Holy Ghost to be manifested in the church. And I want to close by reminding of us, us of something very, very important. In Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1 to 2, hallelujah, uh, the writer makes it crystal clear. Wherefore, brethren, I said Hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 to 2. I just want to make sure that you mark that scripture. It says, wherefore, brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. We are partakers of the heavenly calling. Amen. Hallelujah, we've been grafted in. Brother Paul, the Apostle Paul, worked for us to be. Hallelujah. Partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Who was that? Christ Jesus. Who was faithful to him that appointed him. Now today we have to, we have to um, do some, what, what's the word that they use? Um... This equilibrium. So you have to throw away the learning that you have. Hallelujah. Because everybody is an apostle today. But we're talking about the apostle now. Christ Jesus. Amen. What's the meaning of apostle? It means a sent one. In this case, as it, as it relates to Hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 to 2. It refers to someone who has been sent by God. To accomplish a specific purpose. So Jesus Christ was sent by God to accomplish a specific purpose. And you may be wondering, why is that important? It is important because unlike us, the subjects and the slaves of the kingdom who want to do what they want. Unlike us, Jesus operates within his father's will. When Jesus walked on earth, whose will did he operate in? His father's will, God. His apostolic calling, he was sent to do God's will. So his apostolic calling confirms to us what he would have done. Not so? Eh? He would always operate within the parameters of the calling. He came on earth and he set the example for us. He will always tell them, this is my father's will. Whatever I'm doing is what my father said. Why it is that we want to do what, the, what our professors taught us? Or what the school teacher taught us? We have to do what Jesus taught us. Jesus who was king and God came and he was doing his father's will. Hallelujah. He never functioned outside of his father's will. So why do we want to do it? Human beings always like to break laws. Fish don't break laws. Fish can, don't try to get out of the sea and, and swim on land. Lizard don't try to run home in our house and go into our fridge. They live according to the laws that God ordained for them. What's wrong with the human beings? Much more Christian believers. Hallelujah. 
always like to break laws and rationalize and talk about what I learned in school and I learned in university. It has nothing to do with the constitution of the king. In fact, I sat on the professors in university, hallelujah, and I only learned a thing to pass the exam, but I knew it was foolishness, it was against the will of God. I wouldn't get the certification if I told them, and hack it. Sometimes they tell you some things and in their mind, they say, oh God, Father, I'm sorry for them. But you learn it mechanically and you write it back because you're bright and you pass the exam, but you know you ain't doing that. Hallelujah. When you get a little chance, you, you, you take your little group and you tell them, hallelujah, but you have to know them before they tell the professor while they, they mark you yet. One time I went, hallelujah, to do a residency in Florida. Hallelujah. And it was counseling. I was doing a counseling course. And they told me that I had to hear what was my assignment. A child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had to pretend that I'm a lesbian. And I didn't like, no, I was married. So I had a heterosexual relationship. But I realized that I no longer like my husband. I wanted to be with this woman. That was part of my counseling assignment. And I, I went to the professor and I said, oh, why do I, do I really, could, could I change? He said, no, that's how it's organized. And I had to go and I had to, and I'm good at acting. Eh? Hallelujah. And I had, to pre I had to do that thing. And God, I said, God, you know, this is what they asked me to do, right? I did it and I passed. Hallelujah. In fact, one of the, one of the uh, professors was, uh, what do they call them when they change their sex? Transgendered female. If you see how pretty that man was. And many times I never heard what he, she said. I was only watching her foot and toes and things about how she get the breasts and how she got the thing. And I, I almost feel that cause. Looking at that woman that was a man. And that's probably why the devil caused them to give me that. Hallelujah. Brethren, we have got to understand that we must live according to the word of God. Let me go back. I'm closing this time. I'm not doing as I usually do at church. I'm closing this time. Hebrews 3 verse 1 to 2. You remember what it said? It says, wherefore, brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostolic the apostle and the high priest, well, you know that's Jesus Christ, amen? Of profession, that's what I want to zero into. The word profession means what? Confession, hallelujah. And when we look at the Greek, the word means to say the same thing. You know why we're, not, uh, why we're failing sometimes, even if we, if we go to church for 40 and 50 years, and some people say, I was in church a long time. <laughs> but they're still cursing up scene, eh? and they're still gossiping and they're still and some people are extremely sick my mother used to be glad every three months Gatlin, we had to go for the tablet I said mommy let me lay hands on it no I had to go for the tablet it's a chronic disease she didn't even seek to be healed she liked going to the health center and talking with the other sick people she accepted it she received the sickness and she would just go when she was on the bed by me for three years, she had no sugar, no pressure. I pray like that. And she couldn't go to the um, place. And I changed her diet. Hallelujah. The nurse would ask, how come the sugar not going up? How come? I said, change. And she couldn't think rationally. By then the brain was kind of going. So she couldn't remember that it was chronic and she needed the tablet and the whatnot hallelujah brethren what did I just say concerning apostolic calling of Jesus Christ hallelujah and, and the high priest of our profession and profession there means concession and it means to say the same thing when the word is applied in this context it reveals our responsibility as joint heir with Jesus and partakers of the heavenly calling hallelujah hallelujah we are responsible to say the same thing that Jesus said. So you see what is written in that constitution? In that Bible is what you had to say. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus is upholding all things by the word of his power, the Bible says. If your foot hurt in you and you see a lump, don't say, oh God, like a Miguel. 
Like this a cancer? Is that the word of God? It's not. In fact, demon spirits will operate with that. The kingdom of darkness. When you look at it, whether you're afraid or not, say, with his stripes, I am healed. You see, Jesus could only operate within the parameters of his word. The angels that he have placed around us, hallelujah, to do the work for us, they can only operate within the parameters of the word of God. Brethren, let's do the word of God as is written in the constitution. Let's speak the word of God. Love each other. As you love yourself. Hallelujah. Jesus would uphold everything that we say. If we speak things into being. Sometimes when we have issues. We talk about it too much. The atmosphere have too much of it. You tell A, B, C. And C tell D, E, F. And F tell G, H, I. And stop it. If you speak the word of God to them. They would not spread it. Hallelujah.